Okay, so I just want to take this moment uh, in what you could almost call this little postage stamp scene in the broader scope of things on this large warehouse building flat. And I want to talk about details, like simple details that we often maybe overlook and maybe think they're insignificant. But, you know, by adding them, it uh, helps the, you know, the viewer's subconscious mind register, you know, the reality of what that building should look like. And oftentimes, like, for example, I'll point a few things out. Like, above this door, I'm going to put a rain lap right here, okay, which is just a small little piece of scrap strip but has a big impact because people will, will, will look at that and go, oh, okay. Like they may not comment on it, but it just makes the scene make sense. Um, I haven't added the door here yet, but you know, you can even go as far as to add like different, like simple, like a door plate, like a locking plate on here for security, or maybe a security camera up here, or a sign, a small exit sign, uh, and of course, there's the railings, you know, uh, whatever style of railing that you want. Like, and then here on this landing here, the bay landing for or loading dock, you can see how I added a piece of channel, number 261 channel to the edge here, which I haven't clipped off on the ends yet. But like little things like this, when you go to paint, will stand out and add that little extra touch that makes the scene more sort of believable and adds character. Like this will be metal so, but it might have a little bit of rust on it. And then you have the gray loading bay and then you might have a light blue door with an off-white, you know, tilt up slabs like, or whatever color you choose. But I find that if you change up some of the colors that way and just add a couple of extra things, like uh, even a number up here, like bay one or bay A, you know, and there's a security camera and a light box up above. Like, and you have this large flat, right, that might seem boring, but these are the little things that really make a difference and actually make a, a seemingly boring flat look interesting. Like, for example, right here, I decided not to run this loading bay all the way over to the door landing here. Now, why would I do that? Well, over this way, there's the same, almost exact configuration as this, except this loading bay is one complete slab. Now, by doing that, I'm suggesting that the one down to the left was actually designed and built in that way. This one here probably didn't need an access door at that time, so it was just a loading bay. But then as time marches on and, you know, through, you know, the progress of regulations and so on, they may have said, well, you have to have a fire door here. So they would have brought a contractor in here to cut a door in and add it in later. And maybe due to budgetary reasons, they said, no, don't bother bridging the gap. Just leave it. There's no point. Uh, we don't need to access, you know, this kind of thing. It's all those little things that we take for granted, like would say, well, it would be this way or that way. When in fact, we find out that when we go out into the real world, it's not that way. And those are the types of things that you want to think about when you model like a scene like this uh, that's seemingly simple in appearance because that's what makes the viewer pause for a moment and their subconscious mind registers these details and makes that scene or that little vignette believable which has an overall impact on the larger scope of things okay So I'm just going to make some of these vents here, just out of tubing, rod and tubing from Evergreen. Just different diameters telescoped over each other. Look, here's a sample. Here's some 80 thou rod and 532nd tube. So I just cut little sections with the razor saw, sand them up. Don't get too particular about the width of them, it probably doesn't matter. You'll never notice, and then just glue them like that. Okay, so I'm building up all these little roof stacks and pipes and exhausts and so on. And uh, the way to do that is, is just to get yourself a bunch of rod and tube, evergreen. Most of it's telescoping, so you know you can cut sections, just mark them, cut them rough. I don't even mark them really, I just eyeball them. 
I just saw them, eyeball them, and then just slide pieces on it, measure nothing. It's all background up on top of a roof. Who cares? Okay, so I wanted to show you how I made up these light boxes. Okay, so I'm going to make up, you know, a dozen or so of them or ten uh, for the along the top of the warehouse. Like I'll show you the photo here. You can see right here. Now this is HO scale, so I'm not concerned about the actual exact dimensions of it because it's just more I'm after the impression of it. And if I want to add LEDs, I can drill a hole just above this through the top of the warehouse slab or between these two plates and down through the top of this and just glue the wire or whatever, just mount it so that it's and paint it out. Okay, so I can add it later. Uh, if I was building an O scale or larger, well then I would make this more dimensional. It's sort of a curved kind of box with a frame around it, but I'm not concerned about that right now for the purposes of 187 scale. Okay, so I'll just show you the materials that I'm gonna use for this. Okay, so Number 90, 20, 20 thou sheet. I use 20 thou quite a bit in scratch building. It just seems to be a, just a nice thickness for a lot of uh, subjects that you build. Okay. And then for the actual light box, I'll show you how I cut them and shape them is number 287H column. Okay. And then for the tube and the rod, I use number 223 332nd tube and then number 221 364th rod that's all I need and I could build thousands of light boxes with this material by the way like someone might say well it's a lot of money to put out for some little light boxes right but it's part of adding to your kit though like that means that you won't have to buy any of this ever again probably for 10 years you know or five years or whatever I mean it just depends on the build right but yeah the initial output is costly but that's not much compared to what, you know, the locomotive that you paid 300 for that sits in a cardboard box that you never use, you know. Okay. <laughs> and we all have some of those, right? So just to review the drawing quick, uh, like I showed just previously, you can see the parts here, the part numbers. These dimensions are up to you. Like uh, this is probably 5 mil long, but I cut it a bit longer because I'll trim it down to square it up. This plate here, the square plate that mounts against the wall, this is the warehouse wall. This part goes into the wall that I drilled for this pin here, which is part of this 364th rod. And then there's the H column box that gets glued to the top of the rod. With I just put a little bit of a bend in it, see? Very simple, isn't it? But they look quite good and they're quite effective. And if you want to wire these later, you just drill a small hole through here. Later, once it's mounted, a small micro hole for your LEDs and then just run the wire up and drill a hole through the top here and then run it through pointing it down and uh, you have your your functioning light box you know sort of modern style right okay so you can see here that I just cut some strip uh, for the backing plates and I'll just show you this sort of composite model right now it's not all shaped but it's you know like I just need to trim trim this box up there just 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 scribe that's all you have to do is scribe the plastic and snap it off it goes really fast and easy see there's a the basic shape I just need to clean it up a bit like right there I would uh, you know want to snip that piece of rod off like that and you can see that the light box is taking shape you can round things off a bit uh, the corners and so that gets mounted into the wall See, that's effective, right? I left a little bit of a lip there just in case I wanted to put a plate on the bottom and clean that up, but that's up to you. But there you go, just a standard modern light box, right? With a gooseneck on it or whatever. You can put a bend in it right there to angle it. Okay. So what I do is I end up with a, a piece like um, H column. And I think I cut that at... Uh, half an inch or actually three eighths I just cut a bunch like that and I just squared them up with a sanding stick and then what I do is is I trim off the the two webs on one side 
So I end up with sort of half an open box like that, right? Okay. And then what I do is, is I just glue them all down on a piece of 20 thou sheet, like one end first, like that. The space between here doesn't matter. That's just from repetition, why it looks so even freehand like that. But that's what happens when you build a lot of stuff like this. And then once that's dry, then you just trim that off, right? And then just glue these down or do them individually, like again, just to frame the box up. Just to frame your light box up, see? And then just cut them out. This is like a, you know, the scratch builder's sprue, right? I've showed, showed this technique before. So you can actually hold the parts, you know, much easier and, and shape them. And then you can see I made a whole bunch of uh, these little light standard holders, the gooseneck or whatever you want to call it. And then I can put a bend, see? I can bend this rod. It's, it's very soft, this plastic evergreen it takes bends well and I can shape the angle and I just mount my my uh, box once it's capped on both ends like that okay and it's done pretty much right and furthermore look at this these are actually pretty close to the dimensions of a light stand or, or sorry switch stands which I'll probably build later on down the road, like functioning switch stands with evergreen plastic. There'll be a little more, uh, you know, work than this, but there's the basic framework. If you don't glue this piece in, this rod into the tube, but you just glue the plate and the tube together first, and then drill it out or whatever, and then you can shape the bottom base piece, and then you can squeeze that with pliers. I've shown how to do that, or add an arm to that. You can fuse on an arm, like a mini servo arm or whatever, uh, for the throw wire on the turnout. And then you can mount your detail on the top here. So these are almost identical in size that way for switch stands. Or you can just scratch build dummies like that. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I got all the building details, vents, the roof vents, and then light boxes. So I made... Uh, you know, a few extras of each. So those will work. And I can paint paint them all, spray them all, just insert them right into the face of the building. Okay, so I'm going to require some concrete stairs uh, for this warehouse. I've sort of run out. I had some little bit left over from the brewery. So I'll show you quickly again. We'll revisit this and I'll show you how I make these uh, staircases. You can make them whatever width you want. And if you want to change the profile, you just change the number of the right angle that you use. In this case, for HO scale, I like number 292, which is 80 thou angle. And so I cut this 30 thou strip in this case, 30 thou strip by half inch wide. And then I cut a whole bunch of these angles just over half inch, so they overhang a bit. So I can clean that up later and get the whole staircase square, right? Okay. I just lay them in up against the next one and then just double check the run out with some register lines here on your strips to make sure you're not running out when you run the whole length or however much you need. And then of course what I'll do is, is once this is all dry and set, I'll just clean up these, I'll nibble these off, just board sand it quick, right? And then I'll just lay this on, glue it down onto some scrap 10 thou on both sides and then just trim it up which I demonstrated in the brewery section, and I'll show again here, okay? Okay, so here's the staircase. So you can see that you want to keep it straight, right? 
I glued on that, uh, I believe, 30 thou. And then I'm going to use 10 thou just to uh, case the side of it. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down flat on a piece of wood with just a little backstop like this. And then I'm just going to flood a little cement into the back side of these stairs here. Dusty. Yeah, I know you haven't been in a video lately. Okay. So, just finish that up there. Okay, so here's another little detail I'm going to add just to above the bay doors here. Now you can get this uh, styrene embossed letters from a company named Green Stuff World. Uh, they're in the UK, I believe. I've had this for I don't know how many years now in, in my detail parts box. So I don't know where you get them locally here now, but you can probably get them in the UK. But if you Google up Green Stuff World, they come in 2 mil, 3 mil, 5 mil, and 8 mil size. And you can see here that I just glued them onto a piece of 10 thou or 20 thou strip. And then uh, what I'm going to do is just mount them above the door like that. It'll be one, and then two, and then three bays. Okay. 